Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Prasoon Agrawal from EQ International Magazine and today I'm here with uh, Raghu who is the Vice President of uh, Products and Strategic Initiatives at Enphase Energy. Hi Raghu, good morning. Good morning Prasoon, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. So Raghu, I'd like to begin this interview with a brief introduction about Enphase Energy and uh, what sort of product offerings does it have for the uh, Indian solar market? Sure. Um, you know, Enphase is an energy technology company. We're a global company. We have about 660,000 systems installed um, worldwide in about 100 plus countries. Um, so of course we are what we are known for is our microinverter technology uh, and the microinverter product. Um, actually what we are is actually a complete microinverter system. And since we have launched the microinverter and now we are bringing the microinverter technology to the Indian market as well, um, we have since expanded our offerings into energy storage, into load management, um, you know, and, and a complete software platform that brings the whole solution to the marketplace. So, I mean, can you can you also uh, throw some light on the performance of your microinverters, which you're talking about? How has it been in the uh, in the you know uh, very diverse geographical and climatic conditions present in India? Yep. You know. Um, so let me explain what a microinverter is first for you viewers, for those who may not know what a microinverter is. So if you look at a traditional solar system, the solar panels are all connected in series and you put one big inverter, a box inverter. It's called a string inverter or a central inverter. Um, in some instances, they may add some optimizers on the solar panels as well. So it's always a string inverter with or without optimizers. What we did, we came along and said, we just don't believe in these centralized power conversion topologies. We do everything in a completely distributed manner. So instead of having one big central inverter or a string inverter, we put micro inverters on the back of every single solar panel. So what that allows you to do is com connect your entire solar plant, whether that is with four micros or with 40,000 micros, you can connect them, your entire power plant in parallel. When you do that, you get some really distinct advantages. The first one is you produce a lot more energy because you do power conversion in one stage and you're optimizing the output of every single solar panel because every panel and inverter acts like an independent energy producer. You're much more reliable because you're not doing power conversion, you're, doing, you're using power electronics. You're not doing big box power, you're doing, using power electronics. And in our case, our electronics is built around our own custom semiconductor, our own custom chip. Um, so you yield, you're much more reliable on the inverter itself and you're also much more reliable at the system level because you don't have a single point of failure. That string inverter, with or without an optimizer, is a single point of failure. And we'll come back to why, why that is so critical. And finally, uh, the third element is it's such a simple system. It's entirely plug and play. Literally, you just connect the, the solar panel to this microinverter and you plug it into an extension cord. And that's it. Your entire plant's connected that way. So design, installation, and maintenance of this is extremely simple. So now let's talk about what the advantages are specifically for the Indian market. So we're a Silicon Valley company. We are a technology company and combination of technology and high quality and reliability is, a, is kind of the cornerstone of how Enphase thinks about, uh, about its products. For India, if you look, I'm from India, so I know what the operating environment here in India is. It's extremely hot, extremely dusty, and high humidity. It's a very harsh environment. I personally don't think a string and burr is going to last more than three to five years in these conditions. I know these conditions. You know, we are a completely sealed unit. It's what's called as IP67. Basically, our units can run underwater. In fact, we test them to run under a meter of water. So, so it's a really bulletproof device that's specifically well suited for the Indian operating environment. So we're extremely excited about, we're an American company, Silicon Valley company, very excited about being here and bringing what we think is really advanced technology to a very exciting Indian market. Uh, what 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 co what sort of cost differences uh, are there in, in installing a micro inverter in comparison to a you know a, a usual string inverter or central inverter? I great question. Actually, the question is the whole system because it's a completely yeah, different exactly system. exactly as you as you mentioned uh, one, one rather than thinking about one small component at the system level. In fact, let's take it one more step further. It's actually the total cost of ownership of the system because that's what matters. I can buy a cheap system, which is what a string inverter 
poor, uh, you know, with poor quality would be. And yeah, great. You paid, you know, you paid nothing for it, and it dies in in two years. Uh, that brings no value to anybody. In fact, it hurts the market. So when we think about total value and total cost of ownership, we would be the lowest cost of ownership on most size systems. I'm not talking about the 1.2 gigawatt utility scale stuff. That's not where we play. But if you look at it in most commercial and industrial and all residential systems, our total cost of ownership will be lower than any other string inverter system out there with or without an optimizer. Let's talk about that for a moment. Why is that? It's because we yield more energy. We are very simple to install and we are very simple to maintain because what happens is Talk about, talking about maintenance, which is a very big deal in the Indian context as well. When you have a string inverter, you've got high voltage DC. High voltage DC takes specialized components and specialized training and skill to maintain those systems. With us, it's a very sealed plug and play unit, right? And so, and because it's completely connected in parallel, you get incredible amount of redundancy as well. So maintenance of that is trivial and of course, because we have very good monitoring, all uh, every single microinverter sending data into our cloud, you know exactly where the problem is. And if you do have a problem, whether it's with the panel or the inverter, that microinverter, it's isolated to only that panel and microinverter. The rest of the system is continues to run with no problem. So maintaining it is really, really simple and well suited for the Indian Indian market. Prabhu, as you clearly mentioned that you're a Silicon Valley company and I, I believe that there must be a huge spend on innovation and, uh, and and building new products, bringing out new technology. So how much is it? What is your R&D budget? So, you know, I'll give it rather than give you a dollar number. Let me mention a couple of things, right? We have about 350 people in the company. Uh, uh, we do on the order of uh, 300 plus million dollars in, in, in revenue uh, per year. Of course, being a public company, I can't talk about 2017. Um, so about 200 plus engineers in the company just to give you a sense of how much R&D including 200 plus engineers are doing R&D work and and those engineers are split into hardware and software we are as much a software company as we are a hardware company we are as much a silicon or a, uh, an ASIC company a chip company as we are a power electronics company but here's the exciting part we are we really think about india as such a strategic core market for us that we are augmenting our software team in the us with a team in bangalore so we are looking at being about 50 people actually doing r and d in india as well for uh, for the company so i'm very excited about that we you know we are actively recruiting engineers right now and um, it's very exciting 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 time and exciting days ahead for enphase and for the obviously for the solar market here so, uh, government of India, I mean, as you told that yeah, India is a very important market for you and the government has, has also set a target of, you know, very ambitious target of 100 gigawatt solar by 2022. So, what's your commitment uh, in that particular target? How much market share do you think you can capture and uh, what what's your uh, target to achieve uh, in that particular 100 gigawatt target? You know, of course, I want to achieve 100% market share, but <laughs> that's not going to be quite realistic. I don't think the entire industry can achieve it. <laughs> yeah, you know, there are, there's a really important point here in all seriousness. You know, the 100 gigawatt is transformational. I, I absolutely applaud the government for setting such a bold target. Having said that, the execution of getting there should be very thoughtful. What I mean by that is there are trying to get 100 gigawatts on the Indian grid is going to be a big challenge for the grid itself. And this has been shown, demonstrated in some of the mature, uh, mature solar markets like in Germany, the US, including a place like Hawaii. A lot of solar can actually be disruptive of the on the grid. So when you think about 100 gigawatts, there's a lot of things that need to happen today to manage such high penetration of solar because solar is an intermittent resource, right? So what I have been speaking about, and as an industry, we need to take uh, think about this, forget about Enphase for just one moment, but as an industry, what we need to be thinking about is we need to be installing very, very intelligent, adaptive, and hyper-connected systems. Systems that can change their behavior over time. So very intelligent systems, what I mean by that is systems that are software de driven, software defined, the systems that are all connected to the cloud. The, uh, let me explain. 
as the grid evolves, which it will run more faster than in any, other, in any other country if India is to achieve the 100 gigawatt target, even if India wants to achieve half of that target, the grid will evolve and change faster in the next five years than it has in the last 75 years. So you cannot expect that you're going to put a dumb box inverter on the side of the house or on the side of a building and not expect it to change its operating behavior because the grid will be different. The grid will be different six months from now, grid will be different 12 months from now, 18 months from now. So you need a system that's completely software defined, that's completely digital, right, with connectivity with software infrastructure that can these systems can change their behavior over time that's the opportunity that's the caution and that's the opportunity so it all comes back to cost do you want to put a system that's really cheap you stick it on the side of the house and this thing is out of its operating range or out of its operating environment six months a year from now because the grid evolved the grid's not static or do you want a system that's future proof system that's very intelligent, system that, system that can completely adapt its behavior over time, system that starts off with just being solar to begin with, and you can come back and add energy storage to it. You can start adding load control. You can start doing things like self-consumption, which means I'm a completely self-contained unit. I produce my energy. I manage my energy. I store my energy. It's all managed by software. That's the power of what but that is what we have to do. That's a, we don't have a choice, that's our imperative. And from an Enphase point of view, that's how we think about solving the problem. I mean, energy storage is uh, certainly to play a very important role in the you know penetration of renewable energy around the globe. And specifically in India, uh, the grid penetration is really less. There's so much requirement for uh, distributed solar. So how do you think, uh, what, what's your view on energy storage as a game changer in the solar energy industry? You know, um, so uh, we are in the energy storage business. We have thousands and thousands of systems installed uh, across the world. None in India as yet. However, we need to get going fast even here in India. So storage does a couple of things. One is it helps manage the intermittency of solar, right? That's one of the things it does. Plus the second thing it does is it has the ability, because you have stored capacity, it has the ability to help augment and actually increase the resiliency and reliability of the grid. But we shouldn't be thinking about storage as another little bolt-on to stores to solar. We have to be thinking about it as a complete solution. We have to be thinking about it as an energy solution. So it's not just about batteries. It's That's a very small part of the problem, the implementation problem. What we have to be thinking about is how does it work seamlessly with other resources, solar being an, one resource, the grid itself being a resource, the loads that you have that you can control being a resource, and storage also comes into that same software platform. So the whole thinking has to change. You know, we tend to be very myopic in thinking about storage. No, we cannot. Storage is just another tool in the toolbox that allows you to go out there and provide a solution to the marketplace, a solution that provides the resiliency and reliability of the grid. Something on the policy front, Raghu, I mean, uh, government of India has been pushing very hardly, very hard for the uh, for penetration of renewable energy in the country. So how has been the policy uh, environment for you specifically have been in the last few years? You know, policy is really, really important. As long as policies, incentives, etc. are a catalyst and not a crutch. The day policies and, 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 and incentive programs become a crutch, that's the day when the suffer the industry starts to suffer right we have seen this time and time again in mature in mature markets um, you know the role that government plays is good and bad i want them to catalyze the market and then step away you know give the entrepreneurs i mean india is just you know full of entrepreneurs the silicon valley is full of entrepreneurs give us a chance give us a chance to come in here with innovative products give us a chance create a very level even competitive playing field and you know really good things can happen uh, we are committed you know there's good technology available and you know we would love to bring all of that technology that we have developed in silicon valley through enphase 
to the Indian market. So, uh, you know, I think the good and the bad of the government, get the market going, catalyze the market, and then don't interfere, step away. <laughs> I mean, recently we have also seen that anti, anti-dumping anti petition being yeah. pushed for in India recently against Chinese module manufacturers. So, what's your view on that and how do you see, I mean, a general view, is protectionism going to benefit the Indian solar industry? You know, I'm not very extremely well versed in the policies of the Indian government, especially around protectionism. However, right now we have the 201 case happening in the United States. Um, um, my view is the following. Any policy, any of these uh, protectionist uh, uh, policies, if they impact the growth of the industry, especially jobs and job growth, I think that's not good for the industry. You know, the planet needs renewable energy more than ever, right? So we need to do anything and everything possible to keep the momentum going. There is very, very good, strong momentum. Lots of new jobs are created. Solar industry is one of the, is the fastest job creator, of the, uh, at least in the United States. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's the case in India as well. So getting there and, and, and perturbing the system, in my view, is not good. However, they go about resolving the issues that, that, uh, that, uh, that have come about uh, that's for you know the government has to go figure that out but don't get in the way of growth don't get in the way of job creation I think at the end of the day you do a lot more harm than good just one last question Raghu I mean uh, in our talks behind the camera you mentioned something that your product is made for India so where did that tagline come from how do you how do you define it no you know what it's more than just a marketing tagline actually I really believe it uh, you know, when I, Enphase is known for two things, technology and quality and reliability. We are very visionary about where our products are. We are very visionary about where we think the industry is going. And it's all rooted in innovation and it's rooted in quality and in technology. And when I think about the Indian market, um, you know, I, Indians love technology. They care about it. You look, look at you know, look at the number of iPhones that people are walking around with. They, people love technology. They care about it, and they also care a lot about quality and reliability. And so, when I think about Enphase and solar micro inverters and 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 all the other products that we make, and I, as I mentioned, look at the environment that we have to operate in. It is not trivial. This is a harsh environment with the dust, the humidity, the temperature. Um, so when you think about a microinverter, which is a completely sealed unit, can run even like I said, it's tested underwater, you can drive a truck over it, right? I don't do it, I mean that figuratively. Um, you know, it's really designed, it's made for the Indian market and it's really exciting. People love software. India, India is a big, you know, look at the skill set, the talent pool in software. So we bring, you know, the, the most robust, the most reliable inverter to the Indian market, best suited for the Indian market, and a really innovative software package built around it. So, and I think that's why we are seeing so much excitement at this show, so many people coming up and, 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 and talking to us about our product, and it's more than just, of course, the inverter has to be bulletproof, uh, plus it's also all the software and all the uh, and other things that go around it. All right, Raghu, we'll bring an end to this interview. Thank you so much for this opportunity and your time. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.